Comes though for Matteo Marocelli. He, I think, is out of the game for Bingo Walloni Bruxelles. Another kilometre ticks away. One team doing really well to stay up to the front is Tudor in those black jerseys, looking after Arvid de Klein. They've done a tremendous job, aren't they? But you, you, you have to think that, you know, they're going to burn up a, a lot of these riders because they, they are one of the teams, the prominent teams that came up uh, inside the last kind of 20 kilometres. How long can they keep this going? And will it be a case of allowing Arvid de Klein to do his own thing and maybe not have a lead out? Um, it looks as if that might be their case of just making sure that they keep their sprinter up towards the front to use other trains to their benefit. Riders who have been called out, who are in a mess out the back there. One of them was Larry Warbass, another seemed to be Lawrence Nass, and I think. A couple of Azure Desire riders at the front looking after Vindrame. Again, if you weren't caught up behind the crash, you could have been in a bit of trouble. Cavendish is well back in the peloton at the minute. Maybe he was caught up behind it too and needs a bit of help. In the meantime, you can just see Jaco and Lula riders reassembling towards the front now, Brian. Looks like they might have their man. Yeah, I'm just, it's very difficult to see, but definitely four of them there. Now, I was assuming that he, he is definitely there. Um, but it's just when we come in the exit of some of these roundabouts, when the, the riders come together, that's when sometimes you, you get these incidents. And OK, we've only had one in the run in towards the finish. So inside the last three kilometres, it's strung out a little bit, but that was a case of that roundabout just behind. behind but... You've seen a puncture there, looks like, for um, you know one of the, the Bora riders, but this is getting very, very chaotic now. Left and right they go again, just two and a half kilometres to go. Smallish bunch that's racing today, only 114 riders started. And, well, if you chose the wrong side here, there's no chance to get across. Two and a half k's, just imagine you lose your teammates here. This is not an easy thing to do, but they're coming up to the next turn. Next roundabout, and if you've lost it, you want to be getting back on the right side again. All stuff that would have been talked about, that would have been prepped, but all stuff that can go wrong, Brian, as you head into two kilometres to go. Yeah, very chaotic now, and these roundabouts aren't really going to help in three in the last um, you know, few kilometres now, but Q36.5 with numbers towards the front, but they're not putting the power down. It seems to have kind of eased a little bit towards the front. Uh, Van Uden has been looked after from DSM, um, but yet again, another roundabout here, but I don't think any team are in control of this sprint at the moment inside the last two kilometres. It's riders absolutely everywhere, but still on the right-hand side, you see the, the Tudor team, but the prominent towards the front are the team of uh, Q36.5, also, DSM still have a couple of riders, but there's, there's no real train happening. This this could be pretty much individuals getting involved here, and um, you know, it's every man for themselves. It seems like another roundabout passes by DSM are controlling that position well. Gavidia's where well as well for Movistar, but Cavendish and Aston are down, and for the first time, also you can see that Tudor have lost their place as well. Cavendish and Aston, as I remember, remind you, I should say, are out of your picture at the bottom right now. Bora are well placed, and they have their main man, Jordi Mills, ready to challenge. Another team that's doing really well as we come into the final kilometre is Israel Premier Tech. They have one of the smallest teams, actually, just five riders on the list in there, and they have their Israeli national champion ready to go. We're 700 metres from the line now. We go left here and up towards the finish. DSM are perfectly placed with Van Uden ready to go. You can see as well that Tudor are there as well. They have Arvid de Klein in position. Movistar just a little messy now after they controlled it really well. The left-hand side, you've got a couple of riders from Astana moving up. Ball is there, but there's no sign of Cavendish on his British champion's jersey at the minute. Left and right they go, and we're heading towards the finish line now, and the lead really is beginning. 500 metres to go, one by one they peel off. You can see that DSM are ready to go with Van Uden, but look at Tudor go, look at Tudor go. Gaviria waits in fourth position, back in Italy, a place that he absolutely loves. There the final turn and it's uphill to the line now. You can see to the one he's ready and almost having a go himself. Einhorn is down the right hand side, but it's caught out behind for Gavinia. Can he come around to the left hand side now? It's Fernando Gavinia. I'm not sure he'll take it though because it's Tudor who've taken a big boys race. Arrived on the scene and hammered home the victory. Incredible. Tudor Pro Cycling defeats some of the biggest sprint trains in the world. They said today they were racing for Arvid de Klein.
and Tudor Pro Cycling from Switzerland have made their name in the oldest race in the world. That is a shock and one of the biggest we have seen this season. Delight, handshakes all round. There's Michael Zillard on the left hand side. Shaking hands and there's Arvid de Klein. It is Arvid de Klein who's won the race and Tudor Pro Cycling have pulled off a huge shot, Brian Smith.